exam later here, like an exam here and speaking exam. And at the end of the semester, they have to give a speech presentation. Um, about like three minutes, they have to talk about their favorite top, um, trip or their friend sometimes. Like they can choose the topic. Okay, so here is the schedule and you can see the homework every day. So they have to run, they have to do every day. Every day, yes. Um, except big quiz day, we give homework. Okay, that's what works in America. Okay, students work harder. You've heard, like, um, Japanese students don't study. Like, American students have to study a lot. Okay, this is the course, and I know it a lot. And especially my students tell me, um, Japanese class, you have to work really hard. Okay, it's not difficult, but I'm not teaching difficult things. But it's a lot. Okay. Um, so now here, you guys, student information. So here, so first day I taught, okay? and the second day um, discussion class. I usually review small things, um, the greetings and self introduction. They already know, and also teach hiragana, some of them, like past 20, and also some other expressions, like um, how to ask times, how to ask telephone numbers, and to use this, I have to teach numbers too, like 1 through 10. If I teach 1 through 10, Japanese number is easy, you know already. You can count till 99, okay, it's a combination, right? Okay, so, um, uh, third day in the lecture class, I teach grammar, okay? So, what's grammar? What's the most simple grammar in Japanese? What you should know first? This, yes, this is the first grammar we teach. And I teach, I do this way, something, what, something, this. This is the basic Japanese structure, okay? So, this part sounds like really, really grammar class. Okay, so I just go through a little bit. So wa is a particle, which is a Japanese special uh, grammatical term. And wa is a buzz function is topic. So wa means, wa doesn't mean topic, but wa marks a topic, so topic marker. So when using this sentence structure, you already learned watashi wa hiramo desu, kumisu desu. Sound up this. Those things. When you introduce yourself, you can use this template structure. And also, um, on the previous day, they learned numbers or some vocabularies. Watashi wa gakusei desu. Watashi wa hatachi desu. So they can make sentences about themselves. Okay? And if they know this vocabulary, which they, they are tried next day on the vocabulary quiz, yeah, in school, for example, freshman, uh, sophomore, 1年生, 2年生, they can talk about 私は1年生です、私は2年生です. And you can see why I put your name here. Why it's red? Why it has a star? Usually, my number is yon, but for name, you have to yon. So some exception part, you have to tell them. It's exception, we just say yo nense, not yo nense, okay? Even if I do like this, this is a mistake. Students make mistakes. So I have to correct this every time. But like, that's my job, okay? Um, so yo nense, we never use. And using this sentence structure, they can talk about nationality, America jinde, Nihon jinde, occupation. Um, usually we don't say sensei desu, but uh, gakusei desu, or ryugakusei desu, or major, watashi no senkou wa, da, 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 da. So this is the basic sentence structure, okay? Um, and some students who know the difference between polite and train, like casual or polite, um, ask me why you have to know this or math. Because in Japan, in Japanese college, nobody uses this or math. Like in your, like when you're talking with friends, 
Does anybody say 何々ですか何になりますか You don't. Well, like, basically, we start from the polite part, then move to casual. So that's the one of the uh, language difference between English and Japanese. So there is a politeness difference, like really strict ones. But I think it's better way some school speech um, casual version first. Taberu, neru, okiru, instead of tabemas, neru, okimas, taberu, tabemas, nemas, okimas, those things. But um, if you know polite, that works. Well, so my, when you talk to your uh, friends, your friends might laugh at you while you are talking politely. But that's okay. But if you are in a polite situation, then cannot speak politely, that's not good. That's not acceptable in the bank, I feel. So, so, <laughs> so I teach polite. I, I kind of agree. This is the textbook order, but I kind of agree this way. Um, if you go to Japan, if you are an international student, if you are in Japan, you can pick up casual version really quickly because you talk with friends a lot, right? So I think this way is a good way, like starting from the polite, then make it uh, casual, then students can get both of them. Because I know some um, students who start from the casual cannot speak polite way. That's kind of sad, I think. Uh, in our society, especially. Okay, so this is the grammar uh, I teach, and also about the writing, which is the character. There are three characters, hiragana, both, katakana, and kanji. Okay, um, and also hiragana here. Now everyone can read, take agunai. But like, even if you cannot read this one, you can guess the meaning, right? And also, this one, I said tomare, and they can guess the meaning. And this one is keep muriba, but guess the meaning is in the box, and what does it say? Students can answer. So I tell them, if they read each hiragana, they can read these signs in Japan. And also, katakana is actually more useful in Japan. There are many, many, many katakana. Like this one says donut, they already know. And McDonald's hamburger. And what's this? What's this? Pan. Hi, so this. It's not bread. Bread dough in Japanese. So like um, I told them, like many English words written in katakana, but like there are some words. Pan is from which? Oh, Spanish. Portuguese, hi, basically Portuguese, and French and Spanish have the same word, but like, um, we use many Portuguese words, and also Arubaito, this is German word, so there are other words which, um, not just English words, we use in Katakana, and also Kanji, and I usually show these five Kanji, and you already know what this means, and this is my name, and so usually Japanese people, kanji name, um, this is my class name, of course, and Hira no, this is the spring field. And maybe my ancestor lived in somewhere or nothing on the spring field. So like many Japanese um, last names, Yamada, Murakami, you might have, but um, related to nature, like one of Japanese culture too. And also my name, my parents gave me and gave me kanji. Some people don't have kanji, but for the uh, personal name. But uh, usually we have kanji names, and there are kanji of kanji. Like, how many kanji are there in the world? Do you know? Chinese people? No? How many kanji in the world? Any Chinese? <laughs> Like I start like more than fifty thousand kanji in the world, and how many do Japanese people use? About two thousand. Like if you are regular Japanese, like normal Japanese who graduate high school, should know like two thousand. I'm not sure I know two thousand. Or like it depends on like uh, some special kanji used for names, 
it's not counted in 2000. So 2000 to up to 3000. So those are the kanji. And in first semester in this class, we teach only 50. That feels better, right? So there are 3000, 2000 kanji in Japanese. Like Then students in the semester have to run only 50. That's not a lot. But when I start teaching, they say it's a lot. But like at least they feel I want them to feel better. And some students want to run kanji a lot, really, run kanji. And first I teach hiragana um, from Ai Ueo. So this is the basic vowel, which is very important. So I pronounce this and students repeat it again and again and for the writing, I usually show with the drop board. Like, drop order is also important, and sometimes students like that way. Is this correct? Yes? Yes. If it's, ask like if it's correct or not. But you have to have nice, neat, Handwriting. I always tell my students. Some Japanese people um, think hand, need, if you have neat handwriting, you are neat person. You are beautiful person. So this should be round. This should be round. This one round and this is round two. Okay. But like first day is the most important. If you like, if students keep writing like this way, they do. Right, till the end. It's really difficult after you get used to writing like this. So I told my students, try to have neat handwriting as much as possible. Okay. Um, so we are kind of running out of time. So um, we teach these things. And hiragana memorization is kind of tough. I'm sure I know. But like, they can in one week. Okay, I've been teaching. So I told my students, they can. They have to take, if you need time, they have to take the time, okay? And um, I usually give some tips. For example, there are some similar ones, like ru and ro. And the only difference is what? It's ru has circle at the end. So I told them this is ruby, like red, really cute, like a uh, pendant ruby. And ruby is rubbed. Then there's no shampoo here. That might work, OK? So that might work for some students. So I don't use this. Um, sometimes you might see some pictures, like saying, ah, and we get sick. I don't show it, but like sometimes those things work for some students. So I try to use if 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 we, I think it works. Okay. Um, then hiragana writing, and I ask them to read some Japanese because the Japanese is really just phonetic. This character is always always up, never change. Okay. Sometimes it depends change, but basically. It's e, okashi, ki, kao. If you can read one character, they can read the vocabulary. 